Jehova Malak, ola molamat. Jehova Malak, ja mei rakis. Jehova Gadol, makarian tios. Jehova Erdanai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios tios pantakreta, kurios tios pistos. Elda et Jehova, el emuna Jehova. Ibas Leon kurios, otios o pantakreta. Basilios, Basilion, kai kurios, kurion. Jehova dabar halal. Elohim dabar halal. Jehova Elohim, gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion ni mahagion pantakreta. Kurion, kurion, kurion. Hagion, hagion, hagion. Jesus Christos. Gadol, gadol, kebura. Zon gar ologas tautios. Dasmios, dolas, Jesus Christos. Ion, ion. Derek emunabakar, mishfat shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and intention of the heart. All scripture is God read that is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory to declare the great glory and the righteousness of our Lord of our God. Wherewith Lord God the Father seemeth fit to deliver into our hands His word, which we don't earn or deserve or have any capability except to be the servants of the Lord of a God. Rather than robbing the attributes of our Lord of a God and keeping unto us flattering titles, it is always simple and better for us to operate in the power of the gift given to us as a pastor teacher and expound the truth of the mind of Christ, which is not being told through proper exegeomai standards, with dispensing techniques, and with great intention of making every believer to be the disciple of the word, and making in nation or in all the nations the disciples of Christ. The reason why you go sick in Ezekiel chapter 34 when you haven't come to build up your life, to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God, the pictographical representation of the truth over there represents that you are sick. In order to clear that sickness, no matter the world is in the sick of wickedness, 
no matter the Christendom is in the sick of disobeying the commandments of this great word of our Lord of our God. In order to clear all such sicknesses, the word of the Lord of our God demands that we constantly walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and perform the things what exactly is the truth in the Lord. So dear brethren, in Ezekiel chapter 34, when we find the word that you haven't visited the sick, the pictographical representation over there represents that you are sick if you are not carrying your cross every day, following my Christ in performing to walk worthy and do the will of God. If you are not doing it, if you are not walking, if you are not performing, then the word itself says, you are sick. The shepherd duty mentioning in Ezekiel 34 in verse 4, in verse 3 he says, you have ate the fat grease of them, representing to all the beautiful things what the congregation could give in love and respect of a pastor, because they are worthy of honor, because they take care of your souls, and in return, when you are made to be present before the presence of God the Father, like the way how Saul quotes, in Paul quotes, before he was Saul, but Paul quotes, in Colossians 1, 24-29, we should present you all perfect and complete in all wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the presence of God the Father. So here we have a lot many things to learn. So, the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher, having that legitimate title given by Lord God the Holy Ghost. Apart from that, no matter however the titles you may love to keep, by robbing the essence of the Lord and His attributes, because holy and reverend is my Jehovah Elohim alone. The Hebrew word pakad, we read that. It's an, intense form, it's an intense form of separation, the same thing we read in Exodus. It's completely something different, wherewith you cannot keep that title. And today in the present Christendom, if you are not able to look and change yourselves according to the demands of the word of the Lord of a God, by keeping your titles as reverence and holy reverence or most holy reverence, calling yourselves in the Christendom like the popery calls you fathers, because the Father is only one in the heaven. It's a high time for us to think and consider that you are apostates to the cause. Bible doesn't give you the title as a reverend. Bible doesn't give you the title as a father. Bible has given you the legitimate title, pastor, teacher like Philip the Evangelist, Apostle Paul saying that I am a teacher. We need to know the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher. It is not the fivefold ministry as many people talk. The original Greek says, Phaiman didaskalas is one word. It's not some pastors and some teachers. The conjunction chi which has been used over there is a copulative conjunction. So in all of these things, we need to learn how many errors the people are walking and what kind of sickness is there in you. It not only includes the sickness of your flesh, the sickness that originates from your thinking. That sickness we need to cleanse from our pulpits. So from first where we begin, we begin from the pastor teachers. We begin from the fakery of these men who are having reverence for them as the titles, flattering titles. First come back to understand, as Moses was been called as a servant of God, as Apostle Paul says, I am Dolas of Jehovah. Again he says in Ephesians 3, I am Desmios of Jehovah. 
Why did they claim that they were slaves, they were prisoners? Because that's the title to Jehovah. You cannot rob the title of Jehovah, who is holy and reverend, and keep for yourself and claim that you are reverend, and in return procuring wrath upon you. Because if you keep 99 things, and if you miss in one thing, the word says you are still not complete. You have to keep the complete hundred things. It's difficult, yes. But in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, who leadeth you, who guideth you, who has been said constantly not to grieve you, in the sense that you don't grieve it or squelch it or wax it or lie at it, but rather be controlled of it. You have been constantly demanded in the word of the Lord of God to perform those things which is called to be free from Moluno, what we read yesterday from Revolution 3-4 to the people called as Sardis. He said, these people are worthy to walk with me in white. The reason why these people are worthy to walk with him in white is very simple. They have been free from any mannerism of sicknesses that could come, which is the sicknesses in the sense of disobeying the word of God. They kept that purity of their soul. So he claims, oligas, few people. The few are the people who are walking in truth in Christ. Few people who walked. And this few people today, we are not able to find in the present Christendom, who could be very free to understand the titles what these people keep as reverend, robbing the attributes of Lord God and maintaining for them. All of these things they should completely wipe out. If we don't try to wipe out all of these things from our midst or from our standards of teachings, then surely if you, may, you may teach, you may call yourselves your great, but you are a sinner in the sight of the Lord. So dear brethren, the primary duty of every believer following with the pastor teacher is to know and learn and understand what exactly is the mind of Christ. We are not following the standards of hearsay, neither we want the people to talk about the hearsay. We want something which is absolutely true and clear and perfect. So understanding these things which are true, clear and perfect we need to go back and dig the word from the original languages of the scriptures. If not, you are not being sent by the Lord. Therefore, when we look upon this great word in the book of Isaiah chapter 5, when he calls his vineyard what it has to be, and when it has failed, it will be really a great pain for us to understand. What exactly God the Father intended that vineyard to be, and what he expected from it, and what they turned out. Exactly the same pattern, much more worse than that, is happening in the present Christendom. What exactly Lord God the Father demands through our life, and what exactly we are paying back to Christ. Israelites at least would be in a safer place. You know why? They don't have the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. They don't have in them the completed canon of scripture. But we are inexcusable. We have in us all the things that a man could ever expect to be on this earth. What Moses longed for, we have it. What the rich man, before the presence of Abraham in paradise, before they could go to be in the presence of the Lord after the resurrection of my Christ following that order, he claimed if a dead one would go, and if they once again appear and tell, that also we have because of the resurrection of my Christ. And many souls after his resurrection, they came back to resuscitation, including the close friend Lazarus in John Lemon. Because he wept concerning the people's attitude over there over his life. So there we find resuscitations. But here when we come back, it's something greater that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ resurrected. And we preach Christ crucified. 
and if the resurrection of our Lord our God is not happened, then our preaching is vain, he claims. So we need to learn. We have that which Moses longed for. We have that which the rich man longed for. We have that which if the same mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would have been given to these people. If it would have been declared in the past. And if they would have followed a strict order. Because Lord God doesn't go against your tyranny or anarchy. He's absolutely clear in those terms. He's free because he doesn't give you any mannerism of stress to say that you have to do this. He has given you to be in the standards of making you to have volition in you. And in that volition, we learn very clearly that we have to be subjected to our free will. We have to come back to serve Christ. Nothing else than that. So, given everything, He has given for you to understand that the prayer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Aito, what we read in John 14, which we don't deserve, yet He pray to God the Father to give unto us the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which we are now, the temple of the Lord. Know you not you are the temple of the living Holy Ghost? So being given such kind of a great privilege for us, being given with such kind of a great equipment in us, we cannot be the people still the same to produce as Isaiah 5, 7 teaches. For judgment you brought oppression, for justice you brought cry. And we need to look those words. Because if you are not learning the things pertaining to the mind of Christ clearly, at one end your life is in stake. You know not which way you go after you die. You don't have absolute confidence on this earth. Whether you are in Christ, after you die, you will be in the presence of the Lord as a well-beloved slave of Christ. You're not having that confidence. You're not having that great assurance. You're going to destroy it. Because you have been there in your entire life all the time with doubts upon doubts. So you don't have that proper, clear thinking in your mind. And you go on to ask, you have been sickened. You know, the world also has several ages. They have golden age, they have the silver age, they have the bronze, they have the iron. You know, they have some ages. In golden age, they say they live a life of nearly 100 years above and they, then too they have in their face, the youthfulness what they had in the prime vigor of their life. That's a golden age, they claim. Even as such, all the days of our life that we live on this earth, having an absolute confidence that we know Christ, as Jeremiah 9 says, if anyone he boasts, let him boast that he know what the Lord of a God, he understandeth. He has a clear cut of understanding about the justice, about the righteousness, about the grace. That Lord God the Father shows to him Kesed and Ameth to be the only principle by which we walk. So knowing the Lord of a God with absolute confidence and constantly being led under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being absolutely leading us, we can live a life more than golden age. Because gold, the qualities of it will not change. And gold in the Bible represents the word of God. That you have been built upon the word of God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been given such a life to live. You have been given such a great purpose in the Lord to enjoy. Such a golden life you have in Christ. And today, if you are not enjoying such a golden life in Christ, and to die in your, in your youthfulness of appearance when you finish the work of the Lord, 
then purely there is something wrong that is happening in your thinking. So you have all the days of your life fear, you have all the days of your life sickness, all the days of your life you have double mind, all the days of your life either to believe in Christ or to take the word of God in the situation or you want to believe the rationalism or the empiricism or the medical bill reports or the things pertaining to the scan reports. You battle all the time. When your ways are on the Lord, when your eyes are on the Lord, when your thinking is based upon Christ, you don't have the fear. Because your eyes are firmly fixed upon Jehovah, he claims in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, and whose eyes are firmly fixed upon Jehovah, he says in Isaiah 41, particularly in verse 18, the dry lands I will fill up with springs of water, a rushing water which you cannot hold. That rushing water is the word of God which you cannot hold. It is like a fire shut up in your bones. It's like a living water that flows out. No matter how much you would love to stop it, no matter how much you would love to compress it, the dry lands, that is what the people who don't have the word of God and what we are now in the church age, having the completed kind of scripture, if you have been fed upon such word, if you have known my Christ, if you have understood his thinking, if you have been really known what are the great pleasure of God the Father we need to do on this earth, you know there is nothing you fear, including the last enemy called as death in Hebrews 2, he clears out that matter. In 1 Corinthians 15, in the resurrection, he claims the sting of your death where it is. You know, dear brethren, lot many things which are there in the Bible haven't been expounded for you. So you're keeping your eyes upon men. In Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, he says, perfect peace, shalom, shalom. Those who have, their, those who have kept their eyes upon the Lord, shalom, shalom. Such kind of a perfect peace we have in Christ. The same thing we have in the word of God. And why we ask you to come and take every day this great word of God at the end, ultimately, what you can have on this earth for you. Can you have to say that I have the greatest riches, greatest gold, greatest wealth, greatest health. And in gaining those things, you think you are really a great person on this earth at the cost of ignoring the word of God, at the cost of neglecting the mind of Christ. You know what the word of Lord God teaches in Job 28 verses 11 and following. All the details of this life, no matter however rich you may become at the end, he says these are nothing compared to the wisdom of God, that is searching Christ. Matthew 6.33 Having Christ in you, taking his righteousness and his kingdom first to be in us in all the days of our life, of our thinking. He says, compared to that wisdom, compared to that knowledge, compared to that great gracious life which God the Father has designed for us. He says, nothing is more important. We shall look that. Why we ask you to come every day, carry your cross, follow my Christ. Why we ask you to grow up as Gramati, as joining as disciples? Do you think it's a pleasure for us to see that you sit and write the word of God and you, and you spend every day two hours, 40 minutes, you would have spent that in a worthless manner? But why we ask you to redeem that time and give to Christ? First of all, you will be in the hedge of the Lord. Second, you will be a life which is free from sickness. The shepherds haven't visited while they were ill, he claims in in Ezekiel 34, 4, the reason, the, the way why you are called to be ill is that you haven't become a grown-up grammatias by becoming a disciple to the word of God. And how many scribes are there for us today? Prepared their heart to do and to teach all the things as Ezra did in chapter 7, verse 10. And after the order of the wisdom of Ezra, he claims you ordain elders. So Ezra prepared his heart. Daniel prepared his heart and he claims, prove us, give us this Zaraim to eat, like the seed bearing plants. Wheat, barley, rye, 
or in fact indeed the millets what you can call and give us some water to drink rather than intoxication of wine leading you to become dead to the world representing the lusts of the flesh water crystal clear water fellowship of lord god the holy spirit being free from the filth of this world the water is crystal clear the water alone can clear your thirst and nothing can clear your thirst like water isn't it haven't you tried that no beverages no hard drinks no soft drinks nothing can clear thirst like water so he says try us for 10 days give that which is pure but god the father told them in genesis 1:29 and 30 to eat give them that which is absolutely clear the same thing pure and clear is nothing but take the critical word which is your life and drink in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit so he says prove us for 10 days in the same manner every day till to the 10th day why can't you give your time to us for to minutes to christ and see the difference in your life prove the lord if you want make a short time to spend with the lord god make to be a growing up as christ you'll forget about your sickness you'll forget about your illness you love to fix up on your head now completely upon the word of god and you will be waiting in search of those pastor teachers who would teach to you the right word being sent from god the father after the heart in the mannerism of lord yehova whose duty is to feed you the word jeremiah 3:15 ephesians 4 followed by acts 20 28 through 32 It's not like the way how today they are in and around the world people talking silly stupid things and there are great many ministries for them including John Hege Ministries if you would listen to his discourses he's trying to kid with you he doesn't have the deep content of the word of god they allow to take the social cause they allow to take the present circumstances they allow to include for you the people who would come back and teach to you about the standards of the children in their life they would simply quote some of the things they have their prepared notes in their mind not one idiotic persons who would be calling them to be morons this men they are just playing havoc with your lives and the people who want to listen who want to slap who want to say amen and who want to continue do you think they are so brutish without understanding if they would read the word of lord god clearly wouldn't they understand the power of the word and they want some john haggy and some other person to lead them in the ministries and absolutely ruin their life and that's what it shows the signs of the thinking of this man in the present apostate christendom who haven't come to teach them every day the word of god who haven't come the principle to go and make disciples who haven't given that great authority from the lord of god to go in return growing up into grammatiers and making disciples of all the nations They don't want to do that. They want to just beg money for you. And the people are happy to listen such discourses. And the people are just like the honey bees would stick up to the nectar of the honey. They're just building up upon such ministries. Do you think what they have in their life? Yesterday I was watching one of his video which comes in God TV. He's talking about the way how the parents. He claims now the believer priest should be a king, should be a prophet, should be a priest. He really doesn't know what he's talking. He doesn't have a proper chronological order. And yet there are millions of people following him. Make sure whether he will be in Revelation three four category or not. where with he says these are the people who walk with me why they are worthy and the word white over there we look purity of their soul and most of the time you neglect the word of lord god in search of your business in search of your wealth in search of your things which you can think that is greater can anyone go and purchase kohinoor diamond which has been taken from india even though you love to purchase it is kept in a museum isn't it they will not sell no matter how much wealth you may have all the wealth of this world being put together greater than that is the word of god which we should read in job 28 which should really open up your hearts how god the father hasn't still 
let the word of God to nullify on this earth. He will keep his men to open it up again and again till the rapture of the church. Even in the tribulation we find the two witnesses and one like 44,000 Jews coming from each tribe. Till the rapture of the church, he will not allow his word to be nullified by such morons including John Hagee or Billy Graham or any other person who are not making disciples. Who forgot Matthew 13, 52 principle. Now Lord, the world may recognize them to be great fools in the sight of men. They will be great, but in the sight of God, he claims it's an abomination filth. When you don't come to become the disciples of the word of the Lord of our God, you have wasted your valuable grace on such stupid things. As he claims again in Hebrews 5, saying that these are inexperienced ones. They do not know what is the meaning of paraiso in the word of God. Therefore, they lay upon you the foundations of basic moral lessons. But Christianity is not morality, it is something far greater than morality called to be virtue in Christ. And these people are happy to collect their moral lessons, but not wise unto salvation. And when they will lead, even to the critical apostasy conditions, you know, first care, then intensive care. That's what you have in your hospital beds. From casualty, you'll come to something like a semi-ICU that is care. From there on, you'll have full ICU called as intensive care. In the same manner, the church age, what has been now the church, from casualty, it has come to semi. From semi, it is growing up because of this idiotic morons who do not know the word of God, who do not even understand the fear of the Lord. They don't even have a close outline. Because they have them to prove themselves, so many people following them. And whenever we look such kind of a man who are following such men, if they would have enough mocks in their brain, if they would have enough fear of the Lord, at least one ounce of that, they would go and read the Bible. They would search the Bible. Even the translations these people, they quote, is not even close enough to KJV. And they just want to come and preach and these are the people who want to sing and dance upon the preaching and they want to clap their hands, they want to donate, they want to say Amen, they want to cry out. And they think they really had a sermon of their life. You haven't gone anywhere far than one step closer to be outside of the kingdom of God like dogs, like sorcerers, like warmongers, like the people who love to become lie and make a lie and to have lie to be their life. Don't worry, you're not anywhere far away from that. Just close enough, one step. Because you cannot prove that you are maluno. That you have it defiled. You cannot prove that. Why you have been called the things pertaining to the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 21. First, let them get acquainted. Yada. That is, you have to read the Bible. And these people would come back and give you a status quo for present statistics. Biological fathers are not there. You know, compared to all of your people in and around the world where you have. To say Christianity is great, Christianity is best, Christianity is the best. Without disciples, you have made them to become morons. Because you yourselves are not having that vision as leaders that you have to make disciples. And without disciples, that is not the kingdom of God growing up into grammatias. In and around the world, in and around the world, for example, England, it is lost. America, it is losing. And then compared to all of your teachings, what you say, there are no proper biological parents. They do not know who are their parents. They do not know what is this, what is that. But there have been children who have been born out of wedlock in such a way, in such a manner. There are children who have been taken into abortion. That's what he was reading yesterday, John Hagen Ministry. You can search that in your YouTube. And God TV, he was talking, he was giving you some statistics of your country. You know, in comparison to all such countries where once the word of Lord God reigned the world. In compared to your moral standards, my country India is thousand times far greater. in morality in culture. The Lord, we also find some culprits. 
You don't have God, which is living God like Christ. You keep a stone and come back after one year. They build a temple for that stone. How do you think they're going to let go the children? How do you think they're going to let go their family affairs? How do you think they'll let go their wife or the things pertaining to their undivided families? Come back and look in my country, India. My country, India is great and rich in culture in such moral standards. And you're trying to teach them to your country still. Then from where you're fallen, will you compare your standards of your morality to my country, India? And look. Come back and look. How they protect no matter whatever it is, the wife till they die. There are except few. I'm talking about the people of unbelieving section. I'm not talking about the Christians. Come back and look. How faithful they are to their wives. How faithful they are to their children in taking care. And you need to preach that in your pulpits to your believing Christians. And just imagine from where you have fallen in your work. Bavit, you should have been a person to make them to be the disciples of the word of the Lord. You should have engaged yourselves in growing up in making them to be the grammatias. The reasons why you find such kind of a things in your pulpits is that they have spent their life in search of riches, in search of comfort, but they haven't searched their life or spent their life in search of true Christ. They, have a, they never kept their eyes upon the giver. They had only their eyes upon the gifts, what they would get from the giver. Come back and look. Let's have a testimony. Even now in the Western culture influence in my country, India, they are spoiling. They're having up these broken up marriages, but just look back in one 50 years or half a century or one century back, you will find the couples who survived for minimum 90 to 100 years being staying together. No matter what, the tough time it would be with them. At least we are happy and proud the way how the parents are getting up the children in India. Not, they may not be having lot many poor steps in richness, but in little, though they are poor, staying to the integrity of the family, they're taking care. The kid knows who is the biological parent. We are proud in that. Come back and look in our statistics and our statistics. And though we, the people over here on this country, India, they serve gods which are no gods, being man-made gods, either by gold, silver, or in the standards of wood or hay or stone. Get the stick to the integrity of human, basic human relationships. And this person being a pastor over there in John Hagee Ministries, you want to talk about the statistics of his country and in return show forth. If anyone would listen from my country, those statistics, they would really laugh at you or spit at your ministry. You know the reason why? When you're not able to take care of the people whom you love, whom you have in your eyes, because you know very well, the person who has been born outside of the relationship, what we call them to be bastards, very simple word, not he has. Even Deuteronomy 20 talks about the bastard shall not enter until the 10th generations. If you would look back upon that concept, there may be many bastards over there who are born knowing not the biological parents, Compared to that statistics in my country, India, you will find very few. And if these people are listening to your sermons over there, they would laugh. They would say we are happy with our children. They would say we are happy and faithful to our families. No illegitimate bastard ones here. But you want to talk about them there because that's the status quo of your thinking in a Christian country where you say, God is our rule. <laughs> God is your rule in the past. When there were great many men who dedicated their lives to teach the word of God as it is. From the original languages of the scriptures. They gave up their life completely. Even till their death. They thought word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera. They did not compromise with you. As you are now compromised, coming weekly ones. But they taught every day the word of God. They did what the Bible said. But you are doing now what the people say. Where can you compare? 
to say that you're free, to say that you're really good and great. No way, dear brother. By the grace and the virtue of Lord of a God, USA is a client nation to my Christ. In the many Gentile client nations, what Lord God used after you speak you are. Now he is using USA. And if the people will not come back to line by line, word by word, precept upon precept, and teach dogmatically and emphatically by the pastor teacher to make them growing up into grammatiers, daily carrying their cross and following Christ and learning the word of the Lord God, the length, the breadth, the height and depth, including the concept of dispensations to know what are the things pertaining to God, the things pertaining to Satan, the things pertaining to the overall viewpoint of this life. You know, you have a lot many things as we read that word in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 18. I will make the dry land to be filled with the springs of water. You cannot control, you cannot take in that water or you cannot resist that water. Water. That water is like a stream which will break away all the bridges. So powerful is such word. And that he has given for everyone under this earth besides the people of Jews when he says in Acts 13, 27, those who are fearing God. Even to them he gave that word. And today people particularly calling themselves to be the client nation to God. They still want such kind of a biological parents in need of search to know what they are, why they are, for what they are. And they want to give the senses because they do not even unite what is family to be for them. Therefore, Lewis Perry Chapa, long back in the Systematic Theology of Volume 2, page number 100, he talks about Satan and the schemes of Satan. And he mentions what an influence of Satan has occurred in their minds. The word of Lord God says in Revelation 2 and 3, Satan's synagogue, Satan's throne, and Satan's copulation point. In producing false pastor teachers who enter into the ministry. If you are an evangelist, better be an evangelist. Don't try to be a pastor teacher. Having your flattering titles for you. If you have the bona fide burden of a pastor teacher, then diligently study the mind of Christ and teach accurately. Represent the truth as it is because God the Father has chosen his wine to be his delectations. Not for judgment cry, not for justice oppression. If I have been chosen to be the delectations of my Yehovah, better be what you are. And do the work of a pastor teacher. Rather, keeping the name pastor doesn't mean that you're shepherding the flock. It has to go to be poem and didaskalas or teaching shepherd. You want to teach, teach the word of God, not your intentions, not your thoughts. What does the word say in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic? You people are so stupid and fools to the core. You forgot John 1.18, which says that no man has seen God at any time, except the son who has come from the bosom of God the Father would expound to you the things. And what did son expound? Exegiomai, the origin of the word for exegesis. And if you don't teach that in your pulpit, go back and look in your pulpit pertaining to the 17th, 18th, 19th, or in fact, indeed, the right reason why Erasmus brought along with the three people, Martin Luther, Zwingli, Calvin. They came along to exegete the passages. When they looked upon the original content of the mind of Christ, they never stood neither feared for the men, though they would be slaved or witnessed to be like a martyr. They never worried. They gave their lives a simple way in such a way to God. Reformation movement began. Anyone who would come, the purpose of them was first to establish a school so that they could learn, so that they could become the scribes and they could be growing up in the word of God and the grace of the knowledge of Christ. And you go back and look, emphasis upon Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, even in India, Serampur University by the river Hooghly, established by William Carey, but now it has been corrupted. Even in the past, the Ivory schools, Harvard, Dartmouth, 
and Yale universities who have come up. They have come up only to teach the original language of the scriptures and send them out as missionaries to the entire world. That's why you will be blessed. But do you think now your country will be blessed? How have you have fallen from the standards, the book of Lamentations, what we look, it applies to the USA present. How you have fallen, even to the standards of comparing this biological parents' relationship in my country, India, from where you have fallen, how you have fallen, just look. You have to look it very carefully. You don't even compare to the standards of my unbelieving men in my country, because my country is great in culture, great in everything. If the people who would have come long back to rule country India through this British man, if they would have had the fear of God that every person who has in him is the breath of Jehovah, the spirit of Jehovah which reigneth in their nostrils, if they would have given the truth as it is for them, and they would have been a role model of truth, not just giving the truth. Because we read the word Nagad. The word Nagad meant to say, first you should have in you an erected structure of Christ. Then you can declare... But later on coming some missionaries like over here in Hare in 18th century, 1832 or 1834. Again getting back the medical team, getting back the carpentry team. They developed. They gave the source for Christianity. Do you not think my people in India, they respect Mother Teresa? All religions follow her. Then if those men who have come earlier to my country, India would have shown them the right, right path, the light. They not think the entire uh, India would be for Christ now. And people want to quote and say, pray for India. The same Mahatma Gandhiji who bought freedom. Warren West, in one of his notes, he writes. Upon the point of baptism. He recovers back there the information and he writes. When this man was supposed to come and take baptism by believing in Christ, he comes to find that missionary to be with the neighbor woman, having with her all the things pertaining to sexual lust. At the same time, this Mahatma Gandhiji left the place. And we know the later life impact of Mahatma Gandhi to show to these Christians what it is. The things what Gandhiji quoted, if anyone slaps you to the left, even give him to the right cheek. The things what my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ talked about. Christianity is great. Discipleship orient Christianity is gold. But we find Christians are worthless in this country. And because of this name Christianity, which is not disciple-oriented, even in my country they are giving a place for blasphemy, not understanding the wise wisdom of God. Even in and around the world, the Christians have become major culprits. Christianities have become major blasphemers. Because they are not doing the work of the Lord for what he has chosen them in Christ. They are not at all doing the work. If they would have done the work of the Lord, Christianity, Christ would speak through us. And yet, people in search of money, in search of their position, in search of their life, they are forsaking the right and true wisdom of my God. Exchanging this wisdom, God says, exchange your details of life, throw it off, chop it out, burn it out. Those things which are unnecessary for you, just chop it off and throw it out. Don't think that those things are needed for you now. He says, just chop it off. That's what we read the word for us in Isaiah chapter 5 coming to this great ministry of this great song 
He said that burned out it will be and burning out or odor the word hebrew that which is unnecessary which doesn't cause you to bring into order that which is unnecessary he claims just chop it out cutting off unnecessary things that's what today people are they're not able to understand to cut off the unnecessary things in this life and yet he says i have called you to be my delectations shashuai the word delectations shashuai meant to say your thinking and your viewpoint should be completely upon me but my wine yard became it is giving me such kind of a shock from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun not beholding the great glory of our lord of a god this same wine yard has filled instead of judgment instead of opening up their mouth in the truth of the lord of a god they are shedding blood aren't you doing it the word oppression in the hebrew meant to say suffek and the word bloodshed taken in authority having your mouth having your building blocks of a wall which is not in accord to the truth you have made bloodshed and what is that bloodshed you haven't made them to grow up into grammatiers you haven't made them to become the disciples you haven't taught them the word of god you think you are going to survive by the food what you are going to eat by the things that you are going to drink you are going to survive by the word of god the true care life 2421 life what we read in deuteronomy 83 our entire relationship with word of god in god is what we are based to live on this earth if your relationship is not based upon the word of god better build up now at least in the word of god the right work of the preacher or the prophet is to get back your head and your eyes completely fix upon the word of god it doesn't have any other work the work is to get back you once again to the thinking of christ and to prune off unnecessary things which are not making in you to be the great order for christ therefore in galatians 5 we read if ever you peripeta o oh, he claims you also need to march in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit sto i can and the word sto icon apart from peripeta o being used by lord god the holy ghost the reason is you shall walk in order with jehovah our lord what is the order god is in spirit worship him in spirit and truth the order is very simple who is your creator know it the purpose of your creator making you to be alive we read that in psalms 100 and psalm 78 verse 7 to preserve the word of god the same thing over here when he claims i wanted you all to be my delectations or to fulfill my pleasure the delectations or the pleasure is nothing but having in you the munching keeping your eyes upon the word of god in psalms 119 verse 70 again he claims lord i have been here to fulfill thy delight again the same word the desire of the lord of a god for what we have been kept alive so how we can do it in a particular order the order as we missed today to pray first in a particular order without confession of your sins to reborn in the prowess of the priesthood given to you without being always in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost in particular order you cannot be the man what the word of lord god demands you cannot be the pleasure of the lord but rather in written instead of justice or instead of judgment what we read over here called to be mishpat that is 
looking upon their munching process, looking upon their mouth what they talk, because the mouth is the revealer of the things what has been stored in their mind or in the frontal lobe. So instead of judgment, what he's finding is finding bloodshed. Bloodshed is the way wherewith you believers in Christ, I'm talking about true believers and true Christians who are disciple-oriented Christians. If you believers are not becoming the will of God, then there is a bloodshed. That's very simple logic with Christ. You are not becoming looking upon the time communicators of Bible doctrine, but once again you want to go back and lay the foundations. And he says in Hebrews 6, 1, if we have time, we shall continue that. But those are not the things, but let's move on to perfection. The same thing over here again in James 1, 22, he says, deceive not yourselves or miscalculate not yourselves. The spiritual life parallel am I. The reason why he claims miscalculation, because just be not the hearers of the word, but be the doers of the word. Why doers? Put into action. Po uh -oh. Hearers, with the ear of your mind, hear the word of the Lord God and make it to be your action. Put it into reality. You know, until and unless the food which has been served for you on the table, you take and consume it, it cannot go for the process of catabolism or anabolism or metabolism, whatever it is. Till you consume it, you cannot, isn't it? The same similar fashion over here. Hearing the word of God is just having food served on your tables and now you're opted for the option whether you take it or not. We have given you right varieties of menus of food. And we have given you getting out from the stores of old and new, something great for you as the word of Lord God teaches. And thus, given for you such kind of a great thing, what you do? You completely get something new. And that new food has been given to you to eat. And to eat, it's your portion. We cannot force. Ten men may get a donkey to a pond of water, but thousand men cannot make the donkey to drink that water, force that water into that donkey's mouth. Here also Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can give you the food served on the table that is only hearers of the word. Taking it and eating in and producing in you the effect of the word of God is called to be the doers of the word. And if you are not doing that word, or if you are not making it to become an independent existence of that in you, or acting that in you, you know, you take a medicine or a pill, something like that. If you take that medicine or a pill, it would work in you. If it is working in you, then it's great. If you don't take that pill or a medicine, then how would you think that it will work in you? The same thing, doer of the word is nothing but the food what is served on the table, you take and eat, it is going to produce you the strength in you. Doer of the word is nothing but taking that pill so that your spiritual sickness can go. But you are just hearing, the pills are there on the table, the food served is there on the table, but you are not doing it in action, that's why Christendom has failed. They failed on that simple proverb, what many people would love to quote. Action speaks more louder than words, but these are only words for you. No actions in your life. If you would have something in action, you would be really great. But you are not in action, you are just having words. So he says, those who are not becoming the doers are in action. These are the people, paralagit zomai. These people, they are miscalculating the true spiritual life. So he says, I have called them for judgment, but they have made bloodshed. Why is the word judgment? The reason is very simple. Know you not in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, he claims to judge the angels. Again, in one of the, in one of the gospels of the Lord of God said, to whom the word of Lord of God came, you will be the judges. You are going to judge. So if you want to judge, you should know the word of God. The scripture cannot be broken. John 10, 35. And besides that, you have to judge even the unseen fallen angels. 
when you walk every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have something great. You have something unique. You are judging those angels. At the same time, you will be judging before unbelieving men to say the life, the righteousness, the peace, like a golden age life, what you are going to live. An unbeliever should come and ask, what is this life? What is this peace? What is this great work that Yehovah, our Lord, our God has given unto you? And we will also join as disciples, train us up in that thinking. The thinking which is something far greater, higher and superior than the morality of this world, what the dogmas of this man have been looking in. You know, the dogmas of this man could be compared to the translations. The thinking of Christ, the voice of the Spirit, the mind of Christ can be compared to the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And when we have the original language of the scriptures to exegete the passages and teach to you, we cannot rely upon translations any longer. Likewise, the world is in such religion dogmas of translations being written by men, but we have Jehovah, gift of revolution, the word of God, which has been Theonostas, inspired by the divine inspiration of God. Then how much more we should be in life, how much more we should be in purity, how much more we should be holy, how much more we should judge by having our thinking firmly fixed upon the Lord and make known to this people when Lord our God is with us, how he is going to prosper us like the way how he prospered Joseph, the way how he was with David. He waxed great and great. That's what we look twice, the word used over there, great and great. He waxed in First Chronicles 11, 9. He waxed great and great. The reason over there we find in the Hebrew pictographical representation, it is like a double scribe work he did. And he did all the things pertaining to God. What all the desires of the Lord of a God, which was in the heart of the Lord of a God, he fulfilled it. Except in that one thing, what he did with Bathsheba. It says, it did not please the Lord. And when Nathan comes, he said, such and such things had I given you more. Therefore, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter, Leviticus, not Deuteronomy, Leviticus chapter 18, the logic behind the purity before the Lord of a God, he says, in very simple words, do not uncover the nakedness. He goes on to teach, you have your own wife, just uncover her. And all the silly relationships in whichever manner she may be to you, starting from mother till to the last one as a woman don't uncover her and that compared to the harlotry of Hosea we can talk spiritual uncovering of sickness in this world that's as good as spiritual adultery if David would have stick to that principle to one wife maybe he wouldn't have given the chance to talk about this Bathsheba case you know the reason why we learn this? Today many people are thinking they have a great sexual vigor and valor, they can be sexual athletes, they can go on try to be a good or a right man to any woman on this earth. You are sinning against the law. When you sin in your own flesh, you are sinning against your own self. As you deceive your own self, when you are not taking the word of God to be your only reign on this earth, don't deceive, he said. Let the word of God act in you. If not, you are deceiving your own self. You are sinning against your own soul. Being deceived, being sinning, you are going to lose many things on this earth. If David would have followed that principle of Leviticus chapter 18, he wouldn't have been with that woman, no matter however beautiful she may be. <laughs> Do you think, is there anything greater than the beautifulness of the word of God in his kasa and Ahmed standards, in his holiness and in his truth. Do you think anything greater, beautiful than that? No, dear brethren. Even the glorious glory of my Lord in the presence when Isaiah chapter 6 describes in such holiness of the Lord, in such beauty of the Lord, even the doorposts tremble. 
in comparison to such beauty. No matter how the Bible records, Bathsheba was beautiful. And when we find that word beautiful, no doubt she might have been beautiful. That's as simple as that. She might have been beautiful in all the ways what a man can imagine. But that doesn't mean you uncover her nakedness. <laughs> Covering her, uncover in going on to uncover her nakedness, you uncovered your integrity before the Lord. Which Joseph said, I will not do. Though Joseph didn't have that which was in the word of God. Though Joseph didn't have that which was in the word of God, here we find the nakedness what David uncovered. It really made him to get uncovered of the integrity before the Lord. And yet, the Bible records he did the will of God in other things as well. But up to what extent you are really in the presence of the Lord? So, dear brethren, looking upon the beauty or the gold or the wealth, you may think that's good, but the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is the best. Lord is everything. Jehovah Elohim is everything. He is the best. He is the superior. He is the great. No one could match to his glory. So he writes over here in Job 28, no matter whether they may be preachers like John Hagee, they may be preachers in and around the world who fail the work of discipleship, who fail them not to become grown-up grammateers. In and around the world, you have a lot many flattering titles member who come to you to say we are reverends and X, Y, Z men. Because they don't love to do the will of God the Father, but they love to do anything or everything that goes to be for them in this life to be number one priority. He says in Job 28, 11, because we couldn't go for a prayer, we're going to continue this, because we have come a long way. He says, He binded the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. So here in the Hebrew it says that, From seeping streams he bound up. You know what is that seeping streams? Wherewith today in any member of the church, if you would ask, do you have any idea about the scribe that you should be? They would say, we don't know. Matthew 13, 52, they fail. Even the good reference Bibles, what we have for them, for making disciples of all the nations in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, it clearly states that it's not worthy. Though it says there, go and make disciples, they say this reference Bible is not needed now for us to meditate and they just throw it out. And people would call it to be as a bookish knowledge. And they say there is no spiritual momentum in that. So here he says, from seeping in the sense, those who haven't been the disciples of the word of God, who haven't grown up to become the scribes, from the streams. So he from seeping streams, he bound up the people Though they forgot, yet God the Father in his times, he would send the men who would preach and train them up to become the disciples of the word of God. So the word streams is nothing but in the vigor and valor of their thinking. In spite of the vigor and valor of the thinking of him and we point on this earth, he bound up, he builds up a strong wall of fortification. He makes up in their tent or in their body to have the munching of the word of God as their only life. So, he bounds up in the sense he is going to build up this wall, the wall which is so much needed for us today. And he has made it a wall of fortification for us. And obscurity, do you know what this word obscurity? Wherewith these people, they have hidden. The word obscurity is nothing but tholme. It meant to say, from the viewpoint of their eye, they are left to become disciples, which is not there in their blood now. He is bringing forth, with all of the pressures and the energy of the Aleph strength, is bringing forth them to light. And what is that is bringing forth to light? To give number one priority to learn the word of God and to become the disciples of the mind of Christ. That's what is bringing them to light. The word Ore 216, the light which God the Father has designed us, he says that in the Aleph energy of them, they should have in their head 
the thinking of the word of God. So he claims he brought them to light. And then he claims from verse number 12 till verse number 27, the very importance of his word, which is very, very essential. So from verse 13, 12 till to the verse number 27, he gives the importance of this great word of God. And he claims, what is more important for you on this life, you think? He says, only the mind of Christ is important for you. The rest of your time you're spending to get this, to get that, to look this, to look that, to be your priorities. At the cost of the word of the Lord of a God, when you're losing out and you're getting lot many things for your life, he claims those things are worthless. Those things are not worthy at all. So beginning with verse 12, he claims, Where shall wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? The things which have been obscurity, he gets to light and is demanding the things which you thought will be seeped off or will be just broken out, he is going to bind them up. He is going to once again make the streams to be bound up. So he is asking from where you will get the wisdom of God, from where you will get his understanding. And he says, man cannot know the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. And then he claims that the depth said it is not in me, the sea said it is not with me. <laughs> People in search of the business world at the cost of Bible doctrine. It cannot be gotten for gold, though you give gold. Neither silver can weigh nor the pri for the price thereof. It cannot be valued even with the gold of Ophir being a precious one with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. The Kohinoor of India, Venant, the topaz of Ethiopia being famous the gold of Ophir being famous. And if the Bible is recording them, you should be careful. Surely they will be. What a man can ever think even to go and examine and find it out. They will be above precious than that. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living, and kept close from the fowls of the air. The word living over here is the people who are living according to the biological life. They don't find the importance to go and collect every day the word of God. Every believer is in full-time ministry. And they doesn't understand what is that full-time ministry where they have been kept in Christ. Every believer. So he says the people who are living on this earth, the people who are making up on this earth, he says they do not know because it has been kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. <laughs> Even death and destruction knows the power of the word of God. That's what we are saying, you know disappointments. If you are living the KL life 2425, free from disappointments. Free from any mannerism of death, free from any mannerism of sicknesses, free from disappointments, free from destructions. He says, absolutely you are clear and pure. And then furthermore, God understandeth the way thereof, and, the, and he knoweth the place thereof. If you are not coming with Yehovah Elohim to know the things, you will never know that. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it, and declare it, he prepared it, yes, and stretched it out. The things pertaining to the wind as we talked, Lord God, the Holy Ghost will take the word of Lord God and transform that. We do not see the wind, but we feel, or when it hits us, we feel, or we felt the wind. That's what it is. So a decree for the rain. That's what in Isaiah 41, verses 17 and 18, which we shall look. 
the streams of water in the dry land which you cannot bear and then a way of for lightning of the thunder that's the introduction of the appearance of Lord God the Holy Ghost and Acts chapter 2 in the tongues of fire the cloven tongues of fire lightning of the thunder so he said for he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven that is go and make disciples of all the nations to make the weight for the winds and to weigh at the waters by measure giving them according to the word of Lord God that which is the things which are now given unto us they are belonging unto us the things which belong to God the Father they belong to him but the things of the measure by weight what he has given they belong unto us now so he further claims when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder for a rain is nothing but to give you the word of God and then did he see it and declare it he prepared it and searched it out so he inspected and he declared it the word declared is again scribe so far he prepared it established again kun and moreover he investigated a shaker and the word shaker over here what we learn is very very important because the word what God the Father has given unto us that same word should now work in us and when it is working he is investigating that what the word he has given it is not just like a way where the people will talk in other religion dogmas he has given us so that he could inspect it investigate it in us and prove it when he said in Exodus 15 26 and 27 no sicknesses none of the sicknesses he proved it he meant it and he want to prove that again for us great joy will they have that they love the law he wants to prove it he wants to investigate that great blessings that they walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit he has proved it and he wants to prove it again in your life because his word is eternal it cannot change Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today tomorrow and forever when he has proved it he wants to investigate it shaker once again thorough examination he wants to make in your lives as well so he says he inspected Ra'a first diligently he knew the 66 books what have been given unto us what a powerful weapon this is he is going to rehearse the word is so fair the importance of becoming scribed dear brethren the vineyard of the Lord of a God is a people who belong to scribes they are called to do the delectations of the Lord but they instead of judgment to prove before the world they are getting bloodshed they are killing the people by not giving them the gospel and the second category what he desired from that vineyard or from that kerem he says that I wanted justice no matter the pressure what they have from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun they wanted to get every thought into captivity for Christ but here they found pressure but their eyes and their rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun is only weeping, weeping, desiring only to be repaired. So dear brethren, when Lord God the Father wanted a desire of us to be fulfilled, the logic is very simple. He says, when the predator comes to attack, the delight of the shepherd is to see that he is going to destroy them. So the delight of the shepherd, what he talks over here, is the same thing what he wants in every believer. Getting every thought into captivity for Christ, giving no place to devil, but rather resisting them to destroy completely. No other chance, only destroy. You cannot break and keep so that I can, we can fix it. No, he says, burn it off under the fire of the word of the law. Destroy it. So that's what the delectations of the Lord of a God are. He wants completely to destroy not just to keep it aside so dear brethren here we look he says so fair the scribe when he's describing those things he doesn't want to let go even iota upon iota carrera upon carrera but he wants to completely teach the mind of Christ so then he saw he rehearsed he prepared he establishes those who are scribes the word prepare over here is kum and moreover, Shaker, he wants that to be done in their life. That's it. The people may think in the golden age, they died youthful, though they lived 100 years. 
greater than that he wants to prove now through the church age, like the vigor and valor of Moses 120 years. I said, being not dimmed, neither the energy of his strength being abated. Such a life God the Father demands in our life. Then he says, and unto the man he said, he's saying to Adama, creation of man, behold, fear of the Lord is the wisdom. And to withdraw from evil is understanding. And we read that the seventh fold and the sixth fold and the fifth fold of the spirit. The first one being the fear. The second one being the knowledge. When you have fear, you go to get into the knowledge. The third one is Gebor, man of strength. The fourth one is understanding. From there you rise your life. The fifth one is counsel. The fourth one is counsel. The fifth one is understanding. The sixth one is wisdom. And the seventh one is what? The spirit of the Holy Ghost. So those who have this fear, he says wisdom. And those who know the understanding, they will really understand the wise to be in Christ. So dear brethren, about the cost of rubies, if it is the word of God, do you think you can get to you the gold of of the gold of offer or the tofas, the things what we mentioned over here to be easily available for you at the cost of the word of God? No, you cannot pay the price. The only price what you need to pay: carry your cross every day, follow my Christ. This prize, what you're praying to God, will give you better fruit. The fruit wherewith you could stand in the presence of Lord God the Father to say that all the days of the grace bestowed upon us, O Lord, we did thy work. And doing thy work is what God the Father, when he seeketh for judgment, we are going to be the great judgment of the Lord on this earth. When he seeketh for justice or the Sitkeno, Rather than showing cry, we will be the people to show forth the glory of God from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun as the fragments of the Lord of a God being distributed in and around the world. So being under flattering titles, don't deceive yourselves. Do not be just hearers of the word, but be practically doing the word of God to reign in your life. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. So with our head, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In the audible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest much is dropping grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, that we teach learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set it free. And for the passive teachers, the greatest much is to carry so thorn look on. Herald the word in season, out of season, because the diamonds from my witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses, in the infinity, out the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry. Besides nature, the entire enemy because the witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips are about. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship through the word. What else can we desire on this earth, O Lord, fearing in you and having your wisdom in us? and having understanding of your words, and to live a life that which could be glorifying you on this earth, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, being constantly controlling, guiding, and leading us. What else do we seek and earn on this earth, O oh Father, except to do that? Way? So, Father, we commit everything into thy mighty hands, and lead us, enlighten us, and guide us, so that we could renew, and we get reformed, and we could be always for the people of a repentant heart to do thy will, all that is of this life that we breathe. So, Father, we are grateful for this message, O Lord, which you have given unto us. And as we come back tomorrow, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us once again in thy message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord.